I've introduced you to the different components of the microscope and now I want to show you how to set them up so that they work together to give you the best possible image of the subject on your slide. This method results in your microscope providing what's called Kohler illumination after a Mr August Kohler who first perfected the method in the 1890s. To do this you need something on a slide to look at using the 10 times objective. If you don't have a prepared slide use a new one and make a mark on it using either a permanent marker or a pencil. Just make sure you can see the mark with the naked eye for positioning purposes. And to do this, place the slide securely onto the stage and position your mark over the hole where the light beam is coming up through the stage. Now, where's the focusing point? A lot of students have trouble finding this. So, as a rule of thumb, these Kiowa microscopes have been set up so that if you wind the stage up to its stop point, you should see something with any of the objective lenses. Although, whatever it is you have on the slide will be out of focus. For this exercise, make sure you have the 10 times objective, that's the one with the yellow band, in position and use the coarse focus wheel to wind the stage down slightly to get better focus on your mark. Then use fine focus, the outer knob which is easy to rotate, to get your mark sharply focused. Make sure that the light intensity is bright enough to see clearly, but not so bright so that you dazzle yourself. The picture shows some pencil lead debris under the 10 times objective. These are the larger black objects, but note the presence of smaller, badly defined objects in the background. These are maybe specks of dust, or perhaps some grease smears on the condenser, or even maybe the ground glass diffuser of the bulb itself, and you don't want these in the view. By setting up the microscope for colour illumination, it is these unwanted artefacts that are removed from sight. The next step is to wind the condenser up to its stop point using the knob under the stage. Now look at your mark using the eyepieces and wind the condenser back down slowly until suddenly the background of your view will appear speckled or mottled as seen here. This is the surface of the ground glass diffuser screen covering the light bulb in the base of the microscope. Without this screen you would merely see the actual filament of the bulb, which obviously you don't want. Theoretically, this is the best position in order for the condenser to focus the light beam onto your slide, but obviously the speckling effect is not wanted in your view, so just continue to wind the condenser down another two, maybe three millimetres until the speckling goes out of sight, but no more than that. Now you may find that if you change from the 10 times to the 40 times objective, this speckling may reappear. So again, just wind the condenser down very slightly until it goes out of sight, but never more than a few millimetres at most. Okay, so far so good. One last step. Just as the iris in your eye adjusts so that you can see clearly according to the light available, so you must set the microscope's iris diaphragm to the optimal position. To do this, take out an eyepiece and look down a tube. Now take hold of the iris diaphragm lever, that's under the condenser and sticks out of the front, and move it back and forth. You will see the blades that make up the iris move in and out, making the aperture smaller and larger. The correct position is when the blades just disappear from view, as in this diagram. Practice moving the lever so that you are familiar with the blade movement and choose the correct position, then replace the eyepiece. Now with everything set out correctly you should no longer see anything but your mark or whatever it is you set out to study, and it has the correct contrast and with no distracting artefacts in the background. In this case the pencil debut now looks like this. If you compare it to what was initially in view, I hope you can see the benefit of this process for colour illumination. Once you get used to doing it, the process takes less than a minute, and it should be done every time you do microscopy.